Hi LEGO fans, it's LEGO Collectible Minifigure Blind Bag time again and this time we've got a second wave of the Batman movie minifigures. Today I'm going to teach you my system for feeling out LEGO Collectible Minifigure Blind Bags and I'm going to feel out a complete set of 20 Batman movie series 2 minifigures with no duplicates, no disappointment and most importantly no wasted money. After all these things are $4 each and having duplicates really sucks. <laughs> Each set of 20 minifigures consists of Beach Batman, Beach Batgirl, Beach Robin, Beach Alfred, Beach Joker, Black Canary, Disco Alfred, Disco Harley Quinn, Mermaid Batman, Batfan Batgirl, Apache Chief, Jaina, Zan, General Zod, Jor L, Black Vulcan, Hugo Strange, Kill Em Off, Dr. Phosphorus, and the Clark King. The first rule of feeling out minifigure blind bags is not to do what I did. You need to go in prepared. There are 20 minifigures to collect in this set and I didn't have time to feel them out in the store so I just grabbed as many as I could carry. But I'm very confident I can feel out a full set of 20 from this collection of 36 you see before you. So what you need is a sheet of paper showing you all of the minifigures in the collection. I've got one here that I found on Google, somebody had leaked it early and I just printed this out. This shows you what the minifigures look like but more importantly what accessories have got. Usually by a process of elimination with the accessories you can tell what's inside the bag. But be prepared to walk away with sore fingers, this is not easy work. So here's how this blind bag feeling video is going to work. I've got a bucket containing all 36 blind bags. These are completely randomised so I don't know what's in them. I'm going to feel them out one by one and if it's a minifigure I haven't got from the 20 I'm going to open it up. If it's a duplicate I'll tell you why it's a duplicate and it'll go on my eBay pile. This is going to be a long video so feel free to jump around and check out the video description where I'm going to put an index to every one of the minifigures. So if there's a particular minifigure you're looking for, you can jump straight to that part of the video and find out how to feel them out. Hopefully that's clear, so let's go ahead and start feeling out some blind bags. So here's blind bag number one, and the great thing about feeling out a set of these is that number one is always really easy because you're never going to get a duplicate. So I'm going to start by having a feel around in there. Now immediately I can see that is very thick and that immediately raises my suspicions and yes absolutely so straight away I know this is going to be Beach Batman because we've got a very large dolphin element in there which none of the other minifigures have so I'm going to cut to the chase and open this up and prove that this is Beach Batman and yes there's a dolphin and all of the stuff so this is definitely Beach Batman <laughs> Here he is fully assembled, obviously we've got the very large dolphin element in there, but then we've got the super cool Batman minifigure, there he is in his speedos with a little bit of gold printing, he's got this new piece here which I've not seen before, and I really like the cowl with the swimming goggles on, and he is definitely ripped, so yeah that's Beach Batman, and on to the next blind bag. Bag number two is a lot thinner, so this is not going to be another Beach Batman, so let's figure out who this is, so there's the the base plate, you can always tell that because it's rectangular, it's got four studs on it and every one of these bags has it, so you're going to want to ignore that. Uh, but what we're looking for is some of the other elements, things like headgear or accessories. And speaking of accessories, okay, I've got a, a thing here which is flexible, it's got an end on it so I can feel that it would fit into somebody's hand and that actually feels... There are two characters with this type of element in there. We've got Dr. Phosphorus, who's got kind of um, almost like antler pieces. And then we've got the Black Vulcan with electricity. And that feels like the Black Vulcan. So Dr. Phosphorus doesn't have any headgear. If I find headgear in here, that's the head. And then I've got a kind of rounded piece here, which is going to be headgear. Yeah, this is definitely going to be Dr. Phosphorus. No, it's not. It's going to be the Black Vulcan. Let's turn that over and cut that open. And we're looking for some yellow lightning pieces. There we go. And yes, that is the Black Vulcan. And here he is. The Black Vulcan is a superhero from the DC Universe and a very nice minifigure too. Now, I really like the base plates in this series. They've actually got the Batman symbol on there. Now this isn't going to be a review video, I'm just showing you how to feel this out, but we do have some nice dual moulding on there, and generally it's a very nice minifigure. So that is the Black Vulcan, and on to bag number three. So we've got another quite thin bag here, which can sometimes make them a little bit difficult to feel out. There's the base plate, we'll push that into that corner, keep that out of the way, and... Oh, that's interesting. Oh, right, yeah, straight away, that is going to be Disco Alfred, because I've got 
a guitar. Look, you can even see the edges of it here. We've got a long head, or a, I guess a neck of a guitar, and then a star piece. These are very easy to feel out. And I guess if I was feeling around just to confirm that, even though there isn't another Mi figure with a guitar, I would be feeling out for the, yeah, there's his bold head piece, and somewhere in here, there it is, yeah, we've got a, a bow tie piece, yeah, so this is definitely going to be Disco Alfred, so we're looking for a white minifigure coming out of the bag, which will be a very nice minifigure to go with the other ones we got with the Joker Manor, there's a little uh, disco, uh, I guess cape kind of thing, and yes, that is definitely Disco Alfred. <laughs> So here's Disco Alfred, a very cool looking minifigure, loads of metallics on there and a very fiddly set of tails to put on. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, lots of shiny printing on there. And one thing I did notice, which was slightly different to the cheat sheet that I was looking at, uh, is if you look at his hands, they're actually white. And if we look at the leaflet that came inside the pack, he actually has flesh colored hands. So yeah, that seems to have changed since they designed the minifigure and actually manufactured it. But um, small details aside, that's Disco Alfred and we're on to bag number four. So bag number four, we'll give this a little feel. Feels a little bit thicker. We've got something in here, something kind of round. So, all right, okay. Domed on top, so it feels like headgear. Okay. But yet it's, it's kind of coming down over the shoulders. So this is either gonna be some kind of cowl or maybe somebody with long hair. That's the base plate, that's a head. And okay, then we've got a tile piece. Now, not many of them have tiles. Uh, most of the tiles are either square or rectangular. This is somewhat unusual. I think this is a three by one. So that coupled with the headgear tells me this is gonna be Apache Chief, which is the Native American superhero from the DC universe. He can of course grow in size and talk to the animals. And yes, that is, that is Apache. Chief! So here's Apache Chief, he's quite a cool looking minifigure and very unusual to get this 3 by one printed tile, I've not seen one of those before. Um, I'm not sure what's actually printed on there, looks like Apache Chief is getting chased by something and of course among his other superpowers he can talk to the animals and summon them to come and help him. So yeah, a very cool Apache Chief minifigure and we're going on to bag number five. Here is bag number five and it's quite a bit thicker than some of the other ones so I was wondering first of all whether it might be another beach Batman. We are going to get some duplicates here because I've got 16 more packs than I need. Um, oh right, okay. Well, this, this is a very distinctive piece and I can probably show it to you through the bag. Let's just kind of pinch that up. Yeah, we've actually got a triangular, very solid piece and that is typically used for things like uh, medieval dresses or um, yeah, that sort of thing in minifigures. But this is gonna be, the only one of these is uh, Jor L, which is Superman's father. So let's shake that down so I don't cut the leaflet inside. I do like to keep those and let's get this bag open and see if we've got a Superman logo on the chest, which we should see on Jor L. In fact, there's Jor L on the front of the bag. And hopefully there's Jor L inside the bag. So the, the big thing I was feeling there was actually this piece. Um, not entirely sure what that is. Actually, that's probably where the, uh, the Superman symbol clips to the front, but let's get him built and I'll give you a little look. So here is Jor-El, he is a Kryptonian from the planet Krypton and he's Superman's biological father, hence the Superman symbol on the front here. Very serious looking face and I like the hair piece, that's very very nice. Especially like the little curl coming down on the front there which is very much like the one Batman has. Um, he's carrying this crystal here, I don't know what element that's going to be, it's definitely not going to be Krypton. Uh, Kryptonite should I say, and he's wearing this kind of strange shoulder harness piece. I don't know whether that's some kind of jet pack, but um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll pass over on Jor L and move on to bag number six. So here's bag six. Uh, that's a leaflet, <laughs> not very interesting. Then we've got a head. They all have one of those, pretty much. Uh, some kind of headgear. So we've got a helmet or something with a couple of actual. Yeah, something flexible on the side there. Almost feels like a cowl, but I know those are pretty hard plastic, so I don't think this is going to be Batman or Batgirl. Uh, we've got obviously a pair of legs there. You can tell it's an adult minifigure. I don't think we've got any kids in this one with the smaller legs. Uh, got a base plate. And then... Come on, we need some accessories. Okay. 
yeah, I've got one of the accessories here. I've got a flexible plastic piece. I uh, just need to feel this out. I think this is going to be a duplicate. Yes, I can feel the ridges of the lightning there. This is going to be another black Vulcan and this goes on the eBay pile. <coughs> so bag number seven looks a little bit thin, so it's not going to be one of the characters with crazy big elements in. Okay, that's yeah, kind of a dome here with the uh, concave in it. So that's going to be a hair piece uh, or the top of somebody's head. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so what I've got is some kind of, uh, not quite conical, but I've got some kind of uh, cylinder here, which is, there's a void there. Now, interesting. I think that could be one of the Wonder Twins because we've got what feels like a bucket. So what I really need to do now is find the handle for the bucket. And in fact, there it is. Yeah. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Um, yeah, this is going to be Zan. He is the twin brother of Jaina, and he's one of the Wonder Twins. Let's get that open, and we should see a lot of purple in here, and hopefully a bucket. Yeah, there's the purple, and there's the bucket I was feeling, and uh, hopefully in there you're going to see a handle. Um, yeah, there it is. I was getting worried then. Yeah, so that's the bucket piece which helped me identify Zan. <coughs> So here is a Zan minifigure. I know very little about the Wonder Twins, so I don't know his backstory. But very interesting, he's got this bucket here. I don't know if you can see, there is a printed transparent blue stud in there with a face in it, which is a very nice and unique thing. I'm sure I've not seen that before. Uh, so that would be a good reason to get this. I'm gonna drop the bucket because, yeah, it's getting in the way. Uh, let's just take a little look. So he's got his hairpiece with the built-in ears, which is very cool. That may be the same as his sister because she looks like she's got exactly the same hairpiece, but we'll soon find out. I'm sure she'll be in here somewhere. With that, on to bag eight. So here's bag number eight. A uh, little on the thin side again. So we'll see what we've got in here. We've got a base plate. We'll push that into the corner. Then we've got a, is that a pair of legs? Yes, it's a pair of legs. We've got a head. Ah, and then something interesting. In fact, I think we've got a pair of something interesting. Okay, so we've got two. Um, they feel a little bit like bottles. So, yeah, we've got a neck here. And we've got something that goes down to a wider base. So, I think these are conical flasks. We've got a pair of them. And that is most definitely Dr. Hugo Strange, the scientist supervillain. Let's get this open. We'll be hoping to see... Uh, two conical flasks, one green, one purple, if my cheat sheet tells me correctly. And yes, exactly that. Just before I finish assembling the Hugo Strange minifigure, I wanted to show you this element here, which feels very similar to the bow tie that Alfred wears. And that could trip you up if you're feeling for that particular piece. So what I would recommend is if you're looking for Hugo Strange, you want to be feeling for these conical flasks and you will not go wrong. Here's bag number nine and another fairly thin one. There's, actually, there's quite a chunky element here in the corner. Let's have a good feel of that. Okay, this feels like some kind of helmet. Uh, it's got ears on it. It's quite hard. Yeah, very hard plastic. So this is probably going to be Batman or Batgirl. Let's have another feel around. We've got the base plate there. That's not very useful. Um, feels like actually there's an element stuck to the base plate, which can sometimes get very confusing. Okay, so what we've got here is a two by one tile. Uh, I think I'm starting to get an idea of who this might be. We've got a torso piece there. That's the helmet again. And yeah, it's gotta be so. Yeah, I'm going to call that as Bat Fan Bat Girl because that is the only minifigure with a cowl and with the 2x1 plate or the 2x1 tile. So let's take a look in there. I'm actually, oh darn it, I've just uh, trimmed the cape slightly. You want to be careful about doing that. In fact, I've just trimmed the cape a lot. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go and find myself another Bat Fan Bat Girl. Um, but yeah, that is the right minifigure. I just can't believe I've cut the cape. <coughs> so here is Bat Fan Bat Girl, and this is an awesome minifigure. I mean, as you can see here, she's got Bat Fan all over her. She's got the Batman Fan Club top on. She's got number one Bat Fan there on the pants, and she's carrying these uh, these printed tiles here. I'm not sure what those are, uh, but yeah, she's also got Batman on the cowl there. 
One thing to watch out for with these cowls is that sometimes the headpiece can get wedged up inside there, which can make it a little bit difficult to feel. The other thing to check out before you go cutting is that you don't have the cape in the way. As you can see here, I've given this a good trim and um, yeah, I wonder if Lego customer service are gonna give me a new one of those. I will try that because they are very good with damaged pieces and with lost pieces. So they may send me a new cape, but uh, we'll give that a go. And on that bombshell, let's move on to bag number 10. So here's bag number 10, and so far we're doing extremely well. We've got eight new minifigures and one duplicate. And I know straight away what this is. We've got a kind of a round, in fact, you can probably see this through the bag. It's almost round this piece here. And if you feel it, it's fluted and it's got a hole in the middle. That is gonna be the skirt from Disco Harley Quinn. But just to confirm that, we should also, yeah, in fact, there we are. Yeah, that is one of her roller skates and there's a very distinctive hair piece in here yeah there it is you can feel it it's uh it's got kind of these big bunches coming out of each side here so this is going to be a, another one that we need for the complete set and this is going to be disco harley quinn so we should see a lot of white we should see some black and red hair and hopefully i won't cut anything off yeah w there we go in fact there she is disco harley quinn And here she is, she's a wonderful minifig. I've not put the hair on yet because I wanna show you the two expressions. We've got that kind of sassy expression there on the front there and uh, yeah, a little tongue in cheek expression there. She's very shiny, which is nice. And we've got this tutu skirt, which is very, very easy to feel out in the bag. So let's put this marvelous red and black headpiece on the right way round. And that is our disco Harley Quinn. So on to bag number 11. Here's our 11th bag and uh, let's have a feel. So we've got a base plate there, a head, mm, small little piece there. Feels suspiciously like a roller skate. Those are the legs. And then we've got a large piece here. Oh yeah, it's Harley Quinn again. So that is going on the eBay pile. <coughs> this is bag number 12. We've still got about 25 of these. So uh, hopefully we'll get a full set and yeah so that was a base plate and a pair of legs there those bend then we've got oh what's this here we've got an interesting element feels like one of those kind of popcorn elements or ice cream elements so it might be one of our beach characters what's this here pretty large flat element there oh that's the torso that's no good there's a head that feels like some kind of hair. Then, oh, this piece is interesting. Okay, yeah, that's very distinctive. You can tell a ghetto blaster or a radio cassette player in one of these very easily. It's a large rectangular piece, always got a handle on the top. And this is definitely gonna be the Beach Robin. So I'm gonna push everything down. Uh, I don't think Beach Robin has a cape, but I'm not taking any more chances and yes there he is that's beach robin and here he is this is beach robin and i love this minifigure he's got the dual molded legs and then he's got that expression which is full of wonderment i also like this beach shirt here with the yellow ducks on this is the piece i was feeding out in the bag and another good piece to go for is this piece here which is kind of like a cone to put the ice cream in. But don't confuse that with the conical flags from Hugo Strange. The thing that really seals this is the tape player here, which has got some great metallic printing on. That is unique to Beach Robin, and that will get you the minifigure every time. So that's Beach Robin. And we're gonna move on to bag number 13. Here's bag 13. No particularly large elements in here. Um, got the base plate, got a head. What else have we got? That's a body piece. That's not really going to tell us anything. Uh, we've got some hair. And what's this? Oh, I know what that is. That's a handle. So we should also find in here. Yeah, there it is, the bucket. This is going to be Zan from the Wonder Twins again. And that's going on the eBay pile. So this is bag number 14. We've got 10 minifigures down and we're looking for another 10. So let's see what we've got here. There's a head and... Okay, that feels like some kind of, yeah, it's a kind of helmet piece. Definitely a head piece of headgear, but it's kind of squishy. So it's not gonna be Batman or Batgirl. And it's got, 
Yeah, like antennae coming out of it. So I'm starting to get an idea that this might be killer moth. And yes, so what I've got here is the giveaway. And this is a, in fact, I've lost them. There we go, that's a pair of wings. And you can't mistake that because it's a very rigid pe uh, piece of plastic. Uh, it's got a hook that goes over the head and then it kind of flicks out. So we've got four wings, a very rigid, very distinctive feeling piece. We've had these before in the collectible minifigure series and this is gonna be Killer Moth. Let's have a look. We should see a flash of very multicolored uh, plastic in here. And there we go, yep, definitely Killer Moth. So this is Killer Moth and he's got all the colors. He's a very funky looking minifigure. Uh, Killer Moth, AKA Drury Walker, has this kind of squidgy plastic helmet. You can tell that is not one of the Batman minifigures, but most of all, he's got these very rigid and um, fluorescent orange wings, which are very cool. Uh, so these are very easy to feel out in the bag. The other thing I didn't feel, but should be a good indicator, is this ray gun here. That's a nice gold element, and that should feel quite distinctive in the bag as well. So that is Killer Moth, and we're gonna be moving on to bag number 15. So bag number 15, we've got a base plate there. Yep, so we can move away from that corner. Then we've got, okay, we've got one of these rigid, uh, not rigid at all, one of these flexible plastic elements. So this is either gonna be another Black Vulcan or it's gonna be Dr. Phosphorus. I think it's gonna come down to a good feel of the accessories and whether there's headgear in here. So that's a head. They both have heads. Otherwise they wouldn't be able to breathe. And here's, a, let's give this a shake. Okay, so I've isolated one of the elements here and this feels a little bit softer in that it's a kind of rounded shape rather than, a, rather than a jagged lightning piece. So I think this is gonna be Dr. Phosphorus, so long as I can't find any hair or any, um, any headgear, because that headgear would mean that it's Black Vulcan. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is Dr. Phosphorus, and hopefully we're gonna see a green kind of X-ray minifigure. Oh yes, yeah, straight away I see the green inside the packet. That is, Dr. Phosphorus. So here is the very funky looking Dr. Phosphorus. Quite a simple minifigure, and the main way you're gonna determine this is not the Black Vulcan is by the lack of headgear. Uh, but you can actually feel out these pieces here. These are quite flexible plastic. Feel very much like the lightning elements in Black Vulcan, except these are a little bit more rounded, so that's another way to confirm it. And this is a very interesting color. I wonder if this is gonna be a glow in the dark character, but I can't really show you. He's uh, obviously been in the bag for some time, so he won't react to light just yet. Um, very nice dual molded legs, those are very cool. And I believe the backstory to this guy is that he was caught in a radioactive explosion which embedded his body with lots of shards of radioactive sand that picked up an extra proton and became phosphorus. So that would be why he is quite phosphorescent in this green color. So that's Dr. Phosphorus and on to bag number 16. Just before I do, I turned off all the lights in the studio and I can't see Dr. Phosphorus or where I'm going, so I don't think he does actually glow in the dark. Bag number 16, no majorly large elements in here. Okay, straight away there's something in the corner. I'm not sure what that is. Oh right, so this is gonna be some kind of headgear, maybe some hair. I don't know, we're gonna pass on that and uh, have a feel elsewhere. That's the base plate. And then we've got like a rod element. Yeah, this is just a plain kind of baton. Slightly odd. Um, that's the hair again. So what have we got here? Some kind of clip. Okay, that's, that feels like one of those clips that would go on the end of the, the rod piece. I think I'm starting to get an idea of who this might be. I think it might be the Black Canary, but I need to confirm that. So let's have a feel some more. Yeah, okay, so here's a round piece here. I know the Black Canary is basically singing into a microphone, and that is the base of the microphone. So yeah, definitely Black Canary. This is where the cheat sheet really helps because you can feel and look at the sheet and understand what you're feeling and make that reference to the characters. 
So hopefully we've got uh, a blue character in here. And yes, indeed, that's the Black Canary. So here is the Black Canary. She is a superheroine from the DC series. Uh, she first appeared in The Flash and then later, I think, as part of the Justice League, uh, which would explain how she got into the Batman movie. So a very nice looking minifigure here. Obviously, you can see the hair, which was one of the elements I was feeding out in the bag. And then this was quite, oh, <laughs> as I dropped the microphone, literally dropped the mic. Um, yeah, this was quite difficult to feel out. This is actually four elements. You've got the microphone piece there, which is quite quite distinctive. Then you've got the clip that the microphone sits in, you've got that little rod, and then what really clinched it for me is this round piece. You're not going to find that in any of the other minifigures, so that's an easy way to feel out Black Canary. And with that said, let's move on to bag number 17. So here's bag number 17. We've got a torso piece, a pair of legs. You can always tell because they, they wobble side to side. Large piece in the corner here. That feels like some headgear. It's a little bit like the uh, the hair of the black canary. Uh, that's the base plate. Let's see if we can find something different in here. That's the leaflet. That again. Okay. All right. So yeah, there's the microphone. This is the black canary again. She's going on the eBay pile. <coughs> Bag number eighteen. There's the base plate. We've got a head, They're not telling me anything. We've got a torso, and then, oh yeah, yeah. Long neck, star body, that is the guitar. That's Disco Alfred, and he's going on the eBay pile. <coughs> Bag 19, thanks for staying with us. Um, legs, and then we've got a round piece, that's a head, and yeah, that's a conical flask. That's Hugo Strange, and he's going on the eBay pile. <coughs> Onwards and upwards to bag number 20. Uh, okay, that is definitely hair. That's definitely a base plate. We'll hold on to the hair, that's useful. Okay, so we've got a flat tile here. It's a two by two tile, and that's gonna narrow it down quite a lot because there's only two characters with a two by two printed tile, and that is Jaina from the Wonder Twins and General Zod. Now, Jaina also has a round element in there, so, and her hair is going to be slightly different, so let's go back to the hair. Now I've felt this before, and I should be able to feel a pair of ears if it's Jaina. I don't think I'm feeling the ears, so I'm leaning towards General Zod, although I'm not certain, definitely not certain. Let's have a feel around some more. Okay, so I've had a really good feel around in the bag. I'm not feeling a round element, so I think this is going to be General Zod, but this is about the least certain I've been so far. Uh, so this could be embarrassing. What I'm hoping to see in here is a lot of black because Zod wears a black outfit. And it is, yeah, it's General Zod, as you can see in there. Let's tip him out. So yes, clean sheet, no mistakes. And here's a super awesome General Zod minifigure. I remember this guy from the Superman movies back in the 80s. He's got this awesome printed 2x2 two two tile which says, Kneel Before Zod. And so, really nice printing here with the metallics on the front, metallics on the back, and he has an alternate expression with those laser eyes. So yeah, very nice. Uh, that is General Zod. This is bag number 21, and we've still got six minifigures to find. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Uh, we've got a base plate there, and oh yeah, big triangle piece. That is Jor-El, Superman's father. He's going on the eBay pile. Bag number 22, there's the base plate. Um, ooh, what's that? We've got something round. Okay, yeah, round rubber ducky ring. Yeah, this is gonna be Beach Joker. Let's cut to the chase and reveal the green glory from within. And, yep, it's the Beach Joker. Here's the Beach Joker. He's an awesome minifigure. I really like the Joker minifigs. Very, very easy to feel out. If you're not feeling for the rubber ring, you've got this popsicle, and then you've got the camera. These are also really easy to feel out. And the blind bags. He's an awesome minifigure. He's got the dual molded legs. He's got the printing on the arm. In fact, those are dual molded arms. And then he's got two expressions. One at the front there with some brilliant metallics for the sunglasses. 
And um, yeah, not a very different expression at the back there, but always nice to get two. That's the Joker minifig. And we are on to bag number 23. Bag number 23, we've got a base plate. And then, oh, what's this here? We've got one of those flexible elements. It, yeah, it's lightning, it's a black Vulcan, and he's going on the eBay pile. <coughs> Bag 24, um, yeah, kind of medium thickness. There's something rigid up here. Hard plastic, definitely. Yeah, that's a cowl, so it's gonna be Batman or Batgirl. And, oh yeah, there's a surfboard, it's Beach Batgirl. Very, very easy, very easy element to find because she's the only one with the surfboard. And here it is. Yep, so that's what you wanna be feeling for. Very nice element here with the Batgirl printing, uh, purple on yellow, and that is Beach Batgirl. And here she is, great minifigure with dual molded legs and dual molded arms, and then this custom printed surfboard. That is the Beach Batgirl, and we're moving on to bag number 25. So bag 25, pretty thin. Uh, base plate there. I think that's a torso piece, yet yeah, there are the hands. Oh right, okay, so we've got a long element here. That's a spear, I can feel the end there. Very long, I think that's the longest element of any of the minifigures. There should be a pair of those in here. If it is who I think it is, it's gonna be the Clock King. Um, I just need to be absolutely sure before I open this up. Uh, yeah, there's a pair of these. So what we're also feeling for is a round head, because this is the guy here. So we've got a large round element, which is gonna be the head of the Clock King. I just want to find, oh, there it is, there it is, perfect. Okay, so it's going to be the Clock King. And he is going to be number 17 of our 20. So this is the Clock Man, AKA William Tockman, and a very funny looking minifigure with this clock for a face. Still, I guess he's never late to parties. Um, he's got these two spears here, which are very, very easy to feel out in the bag, and this round clock face. His outfit here is covered in printed clocks, which is very cool, and he's got this very nice green cape on, although it's not as soft as the capes that Batman wears, it's a little bit more papery. So that is William Tockman. Also some printing on the back there for the dials, which is quite nice. So onwards and upwards to bag number 26. Bag number 26. Um, little round stud there. Hair. Oh yeah. <laughs> Triangle piece. That's jaw L. <laughs> this is bag number 27 and my fingers are starting to get sore. Uh, I did warn you about that. Oh, right, okay. Straight away in the corner there, there is a, almost like a pitchfork. This is gonna be the trident of mermaid Batman. Let's just feel around a little bit more to make sure. Uh, there's a head, a torso piece. That's, okay, yeah. That is a very unusual element. I feel that there, that's got tail. Uh, the Mermaid Batman minifigure stands on like a tail, which is a rigid piece, very long, very sticky out, and that is going to be Mermaid Batman. And of course we found him using the Trident tested method of feeling out the bags. So let's open him up, and there he is. Yeah, there's the piece I was feeling out for. So that is the Mermaid's tail that enables him to stand on the minifigure plate, and let's put him together. So here is Mermaid Batman, he's very easy to feel out with the trident in the bag and then the very distinctive mermaid tail piece. And that's got some nice metallic printing on the front there. The torso's also got some metallic printing and he's wearing those clamshells over his um, yeah, over his chest. Um, I'm not sure why Batman would need to do that, but a very cool and unusual minifigure. So bag number 28, which means we've only got eight more to work with and we still need to find two minifigures. So hopefully this isn't gonna be a duplicate. Um, that feels like the Killer Moth's ray gun and feeling around there's a torso piece. I'm looking for a pair of wings, that's what I'm expecting. And there they are. Yes, that's a killer moth. He's going on the eBay pile. <coughs> Bag number 29, and I'm starting to get worried. 
Uh, let's have a feel. So we've got a torso there, base plate. What else can we find in here? Uh, uh, I think there's another duplicate we've got. Yeah, that's the guitar. This is going to be Beach Alfred. And this just shows you why you need to fill these bags out because it's so easy to pick up duplicates. That is Beach Alfred. He's going on eBay. <coughs> Bag 30 of 36. We still don't have our set. I'm getting very worried. Um, and that's this is not filling me with hope because I think that's the hairpiece from the Apache Chief. Um, that's the base. Ooh. No, is that a base plate? That feel, ah, I see what's happening here. So yeah, the one by three tile has actually stuck to the studs on the bottom of the base plate. So this is definitely gonna be Apache Chief for the eBay pile. <coughs> so bag 31, still too many figures to find. That is the base plate. Oh, right, okay. You see what I see here? In fact, if I pinch that through the bag, that is a round piece. Now that is what I've been feeling for when I've been feeling for Jaina. So hopefully, yep, there's a round piece there. There's a two by two tile, and this can only be Jaina. She is the sister from the Wonder Twins. And that makes me very excited because that means we're 19 from 20, hopefully. Yes, that is Jaina from the Wonder Twins. And we've only got one more mini figure to find. So this is Jaina from the Wonder Twins. She is Zan's twin sister. And here's the element I was looking for and getting worried about. That is a vinyl record. And there she has a sleeve, which I think says 24 party songs. I'm not sure why 24 and not 21, but uh, yeah, very nice minifigure and very pleased to get her. So now we just need to find Beach Alfred. Bag 32, and I do hope I find what I'm looking for here, because otherwise I'm gonna be running off to the store unless it's in one of the last few bags that I've got. So, okay, there's a round piece there. That could be Alfred's, uh, could be Alfred's bow tie. It could also be Hugo Strange. Is that, is that the wine glass? That feels like a conical flask and another conical flask. Yeah, that's Hugo Strange. And he's going on the eBay pile. <coughs> so bag number 33 of 36. Oh, I'm getting seriously worried. Um, we might be running out to the store to find some more of these. Uh, there's a base plate. Now that doesn't feel like a conical flask. I've got something here with a, a base on it and then a flute. Um, that feels like a wine glass, which could mean that we're in business. There are some legs. That's a body. That feels like the top of Alfred's head because he's bold, yet he's still got a little bit of hair around the sides. So that's definitely some kind of hair piece, but it doesn't feel like, well, Hugo Strange wouldn't have one of these because he's bold completely and doesn't have any kind of head decoration. There's a head. That's the, I think that's a wine glass again. So what I'm looking for now is hopefully the cherry that Alfred has in his cocktail. And I think this is it. Yeah, this is this is going to be our 20th minifigure. To complete the set, this is going to be Beach Alfred. Uh, let's take a look and hope and pray. And yes, it's Beach Alfred, all 20 at last. And here he is, the final minifigure. I am so relieved to see Alfred in his beach costume. Uh, he's got great molded legs and molded arms and this very old traditional beach bathing suit. Uh, you can see the headpiece there, which is uh, bold on top and with the gray hair around the side there. There's the wine glass I was feeling for. And then to confirm it, you need the cherries, which go in his cocktail. So that is Beach Alfred. Let's wrap up and take a look at all 20 minifigures. So after some careful feeling and a little bit of patience, we're rewarded with all 20 of the Batman Movie Series 2 minifigures. I know this was a very long video, but I hope you found it useful. And if you check the video description, you're gonna see an index where you can jump to me feeling out every one of these minifigures. So if there's a specific minifigure you want to get, you can go back and check out the technique. I hope you enjoyed my Batman Movie Series 2 Blind Bag Feeling Guide. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. I release two new LEGO review videos every single week, so you'll always find something new or something old to enjoy on my channel. Thanks so much for joining me today. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.